Okay, what's up Super Doggers? Merong pinadala sa aking video itong si Sir Freddy Malalay tungkol sa years of breeding ruined popular dog breeds kung paano nasira ang maraming mga breeds dahil sa years and years of selective breeding para magkaroon sila ng certain look. Panoorin natin yung video na to. Sabay, no? Bigyan natin ng comments. Ayan! Di ba? May ads. Over the years, selective breeding and human influence have drastically changed the appearance of many dog breeds. While oh. breeders think they are creating more beautiful dogs, they don't realize how much damage they are causing to the animals. Okay, in fairness sa mga breeders, no, maraming nadadamage ngayon ng mga popular na mga purebred dogs. Hindi nila kasalanan, hindi nila alam. Pero ang gusto lang naman kasi ng mga breeders ay makapag-produce ng magagandang mga aso based on sa kanilang preferences and preference ng market, syempre. Kasi yung market lang naman nag-dedictate din sa price and popularity ng mga dog breeds. And dahil nga sa preference sa mga itsura, nagkakaroon tuloy ng mga maraming problema sa kalusugan. Tignan po natin yung mga ilang mga dog breeds dito and kung paano nakaapekto ito sa kalusugan in general ng mga members ng mga breeds ng mga dogs na ito. In this video, we will discuss how years of selective breeding has drastically changed some of the most popular dog breeds. Number 14, the pug. The pug has been selectively bred to feature an extremely flat face and curly tail. While these changes made them more appealing to some buyers, they opened up a whole slew of health problems for the breed. Pug's pushed-in face makes them susceptible to breathing difficulties, low oxygen levels, overheating and dental problems. Pug's desirable double curled tail is actually a genetic defect that results from their spinal deformity. Okay, so spinal deformity, respiratory problems, dental problems dahil nga masyadong pinaikli yung nguso nila. As well as mga skin problems dahil dun sa mga folds ng balat nila, uh, daming, ano, daming lumitaw ng mga problema dahil dun sa selective breeding para sa mga pugs. It often causes back pain and can even lead to back leg paralysis. Number 13, Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. Wala masyado nito sa Pilipinas. Pero sa ibang bansa, marami nito, like sa Europe, especially sa Great Britain. The Cavalier has a small stature and affectionate personality which make them ideal pets. Unfortunately, years of breeding for a prettier head has resulted in too small of a skull. Lumiit ang bungo nila. Kawawa naman itong mga aso nito. Put simply, this means their skull is too small for their brain. As a result, their brain squeezes through the opening leading to the spinal cord, causing pain and sometimes facial nerve paralysis. Oh, so may mga tao naman, sobrang daming utak nila, sobrang dami nilang nalalaman na lumalabas naman tuloy yung utak nila kung saan-saan dahil sa sobrang talino nila. Nakakabaliw din yun. Pero itong aso na to, maraming mga cases na nagkakaroon nga ng paralysis, nagkakaroon ng mga movement problems dahil lumiit nga yung ulo nila. Hindi na magkaasya yung utak. Number 12, the Bull Terrier. The Bull Terrier's head, along with the rest of its body, have transformed drastically over the years due to serious impaired breeding. In the past, the Bull Terrier was an athletic, good-looking dog with... Okay, so maraming mga working dogs. Ito ang problema. Dati, ito itsura ng Bull Terrier. Ganyan din, marami din mga working breeds na ang ganda ng itsura nila, very functional, very capable yung kanilang mga katawan. Tingnan mo nangyari dito sa Bull Terrier. With a slim torso and well-proportioned head. But modern Bull Terriers have an egg-shaped head and thick body. Because of their unnatural head shape, today's Bull Terriers suffer from dental problems as they have too many teeth in their enlarged jaws. Sobrang ngipin. These dogs also picked up mental deficiencies such as a habit of compulsively chasing their tails and skin vulnerability. Habol nang habol sa buntot nila. These to rash or insect bites. Marami mga dogs na puti ang balahibo na nagkakaroon ng problema sa balat. You know, shout out sa mga kaibigan natin may bull terriers diyan. Uh, maraming mga kaibigan ko ang merong ano, may problem ang bull terrier nila sa balat, very sensitive. Hindi naman lahat, no? Kaya take this video with a grain of salt. Ibig sabihin lang na hindi naman ito paninira sa mga iba-ibang breeds. Kundi sinasabi lang na mayroong mga kaakibat na mga problema yung selective breeding for aesthetics. 11. Dachshund Dachshunds are also known as sausage dogs and were originally used to hunt rabbits, sausage dogs or hot dogs, foxes and other tunneling animals because of their short-legged compact frame. 
While these dogs have always had stubby legs and long bodies, many years ago their legs and back were... Ay, itsura ng original ng mga dachshund, do? hindi naman ganun kababa, di ba? ...were more proportionate to their size. Thanks to altered breeding, their back has stretched out and their legs have shrunk to a point where they can hardly maneuver over obstacles a few inches off the ground. Ayan, hindi na makatalon-talon. These changes have made dachshunds at huge risk of intervertebral disc disease and spinal damage, which can lead to paralysis. Totoo yun. Oo, so maliliit naman yung legs nila masyado, umaba masyado yung mga likod nila, ang daming mga kaakibat na problema niyan, may kinalaman doon sa kanilang struktura. Number 10, English Bulldog. In Great Britain, the English Bulldog was used for bull baiting, a blood sport where dogs were used to bait and attack bulls. The dog was selective bred to have an even thicker and squatter body. Today, bulldogs' unnatural proportions make them incapable of mating or giving birth without... Yun ang problema sa mga masyado ng mga na-mutate na mga dogs. Pati sexual activity, hindi nila magawa na maayos on their own. Hindi na nila magawa on their own. Kailangan na nila ng mga shooters or artificial insemination dahil na-mutate na masyado yung mga katawa nila from the natural dogs. Medical intervention. These dogs also suffer from overheating and breathing problems because of their pushed-in face. Ayan, so malit na yung mga snouts nila or muzzle nila, nahirapan na sila huminga, prone sila ngayon sa heat stress, prone sila sa heat stroke, may mga namamatay ng mga bulldogs, pati yung mga ibang breeds na maikli ang ilong, magbilis sila. Mamatay pagka konti na yung oxygen or nahirapan sila dahil sa init, diba marami na tayong narinig na ganyan. Number 9, Boxer. Earlier in their existence, Boxers had pointy ears and long snouts, but today they have floppy ears and flatter noses. Yan naman, bago na namang mga development sa mga boxers, pinaikli nila ng pinaikli ngayon. Recently, mas maikli, mas uh, dumadami mga boxers na ganito ang itsura. ...that are more compact. Unfortunately, their shortened snout is a cause of some serious breathing problems. Boxers' large body requires significant physical exercise, but their pushed-in nose limits their oxygen intake. As a result, boxers are unable to work their body to their full potential. Modern boxers also have more flesh in their mouths, so they don't pant as efficiently. This means they overheat more quickly and can hardly tolerate hot... Parang yung English Bulldog din, di ba? Number 8. Poodles. Originally, the poodle was considered a water retriever, meaning... Ang galing, di ba? So yung mga poodles pala, dati pala silang sporting dogs, tiga retrieve sa tubig. Meaning they were used to retrieve water birds and ducks for hunters, mainly because they had a water-resistant coat. Poodles had long, stranded coats that almost resembled braids. Ibang-iba yung tsuron ng mga poodles noon, no? tignan nyo. Parang si Amadeo Habana, pero nagpagupit na ngayon si Amadeo. Pero ganito pala yung tsura ng mga poodles noon, parang puli. However, years of selective breeding has drastically changed the shape and texture of their fur. Modern poodles have got soft and often curly coats, and these changes to their coats came at a cost to their health. Today's poodles suffer from a skin disease called sebaceous adenitis, loss of fur, scaly patches and itching, to the extent of pulling out hair, are common problems for many poodles. Poodles' fur and skin often require lifelong treatment with... Okay, common lang naman siya. Hindi naman lahat, no? So, hopefully, mga poodles po ninyo, wala naman ganyan mga problem sa balat nila. Pero pagka na-applic sila ng mga gandong sakit, mahihirap din yung gamutan. With options ranging from special shampoos to medications. Use super dog soaps, the best for all dogs. Nakakatulong siya ng malaki kapag kay mga dogs ninyo ay prone sa mga skin problems. Number 7. German Shepherd Before evolving to fit modern standards, the German Shepherd was considered to be a medium-sized dog with strong legs, a deep chest, and straight back. Medium-sized dog. Tandaan nyo, hindi siya large dog. And straight back. It was used to herd and guard sheep. Over time, a growing demand emerged for the breed to become larger and more imposing in appearance. Genetic alteration aimed to provide a solution, but this came at a cost to the dog's health. Today, the German Shepherd is much heavier and features a back that slopes drastically, making them prone to hip dysplasia, a condition where the leg bones don't fit properly into the hip socket. At some point, these dogs... Belgian Malinois. 
Pero ibig sabihin, dahil sa pagpapalaki ng size ng mga German Shepherd, pag slope ng backs nila, nagkaroon tuloy ng problema ngayon ito sa mobility and hip dysplasia problems. Kaya yung paggamit sa mga German Shepherds sa totoong trabaho, medyo na hamper na. Mas gusto na ngayon ng mga military, police, and uh, canine security na gamitin yung mga dogs na mas athletic kagaya nito mga Belgian Malinois at mga Dutch Shepherds. Pero meron pa rin namang mga working line ng mga German Shepherds, iba itsura nila. And mas okay yon mas hardy itong mga dogs na ito ng mga Belgian Malinois. Mas hardy sila pagdating sa work at saka sa heat. And talagang ano, para energizer bunny sila. Ganda pa naman ng mga German Shepherds, diba? Dogs could jump over an eight-foot wall. But today's German Shepherds are no longer the athletic breed they used to be. They are instead too big for their own good. Lack of physical exercise within a domesticated setting is also a cause for concern. Too big for their own good. Kaya yung mga nagbe-breed ng mga working dogs na masyadong malaki, nagkakaproblema sa agility ng dog, ng kanilang movement. Ideally po talaga, ang German Shepherd, Belgian Malinois, Dutch Shepherd, Medium lang yung size or hindi yung kagaya ng mga oversized XXL na mga gusto ng iba. Because of the mobility or yung agility issues pagka masyadong malaki na yung mga dogs. Number six, the Basset Hound. Basset Hounds have always had large ears and short legs, but after displaying this breed at a dog show in 1863, a growing demand to alter its winning features emerged. Researchers have determined that the Basset Hound's short legs are a result of an extra copy of a certain gene which produces growth protein. Prior to this genetic mutation, the Basset Hounds had smaller ears and a less droopy face. Unfortunately, these changes have made the breed susceptible to many health problems. Their excessive skin can lead to dermatitis in the skin folds. Their droopy eyes are prone to serious eye problems and their short legs can cause spinal problems. Number five, the bearded collie. Bearded collies have always been considered very friendly, lovable and all round great pets. But this breed never had the huge coat that it has today. Modern bearded collies are shorter and much stockier than they used to be. Although they do not experience any severe defects due to breeding, many bearded collies are prone to skin allergies. Maraming mga dogs, mutated na masyado yung mga balat nila. Yung iba sobrang ikli, yung iba puti na yung balat at saka iba naman sobrang haba. Nagiging prone sila sa mga skin allergies, skin problems. Number four, the St. Bernard. St. Bernards were originally used to rescue lost travelers buried by snowstorms and avalanches in the cold mountains of the Alps. So yung mga St. Bernards pala ay mga working dogs. Talagang meron silang purpose doon sa mga mountainous areas na uh, puro ice. Compared to their ancestors, today's St. Bernards have bigger skulls with steeper bigger angles skulls. between their nose and foreheads. Mm -hmm. The dog is also much larger than its early ancestors yeah. and it has a more squished in face and Ang ganda naman, di ba? Pero yun nga lang, hindi na siya natural, kaya nagkakaroon ng problema. Magaganda yung mga breeds natin ngayon ng mga dogs. Ang ganda aesthetically, pero dahil nga ang layo na niya sa natural, may mga kasama ng problema. Longer fur. Although once a working dog, they now suffer from a variety of health issues such as overheating and entropion, a condition in which the eyelid is rolled inward against the eyeball. Ayan, yung mga defects ng mga mata. Marami tayong nakita mga dogs na mga na-develop na mas sad-faced. Nagkakaproblema tuloy yung mata. Number three, the White Terrier. Years ago, the White Terrier, known as the Westie, was an athletic and working dog with great instincts. Because of their short, stocky frames, they were used to hunt rats, badgers, or other vermin at the farms. After years of genetic alteration, today's white terrier is not nearly as athletic as its ancestors. Their coat has become longer and their legs have been stunted. This has made them very susceptible to luxating patella, a condition... Okay, marami mga dogs nga na originally developed for work, for specific purposes, tapos hindi na ngayon nila ginagawa yung mga trabaho ngayon. Binibreed sila for the pet industry, for people who just want companions. Kaya nagkakaroon tuloy ng uh, problema sa mga uh, physical structures nila, sa uh, maraming health issues dahil ano nga, hindi na yun yung natural purpose nila. And yung mga breeders, binibreed na lang sila basically for the looks rather than yung functionality. ...in which the kneecap moves out of its natural position. Iyan, yeah, no? patay ang uh, luxation. Marami na po tayo nakikita mga cases na ganyan. 
While Westies make for an incredible family pet, they aren't nearly the dog they used to be. These days, you probably find the White Terriers modeling for brands rather than hunting for foxes. Number two, Chow Chow. It is believed that the Chow Chow dates back to 206 BC of the ancient China because of the similarities found in Chinese potteries. Many years ago, the Chow Chow was a medium-sized dog with a slightly heavy coat. However, today's Chow Chows developed... Ang layo, di ba, from early Chow Chows and mga Chow Chows ngayon. Ang layo ng pagkakaiba nila. Mas cute nga naman ito, pero mas natural ito, mas mukhang wolf ito. Pero ito yung mga problema. A drastically dense coat and excessive skin, which results in reduced peripheral vision and sometimes skin allergies and coat issues. Ayan, so yung mata nila, masyado nag-droop kasi yung, yung face, no? yung mata nila hindi na makakita na maayos dahil nga, ano, dahil doon sa coat at saka doon sa skin. Skin allergies, coat issues, common din. Number one, Salukis. Salukis are known for their lean build. These pups are as skinny as supermodels, which also means they're really fast. Studies have shown that Salukis might be one of the oldest dog breeds known to man. Salukis originated in the Middle East, and the drawings of these dogs date back to 4200 BC. Archaeologists have even uncovered mummified Salukis in ancient Egyptian tombs. Thankfully, the physical appearance of the Saluki has not changed much, but they are now susceptible to heart defects and certain eye problems. Okay guys, so yun yung mga iba-ibang mga breeds na dinis-discuss dito. Marami pang ibang mga breeds ang naapektuhan dahil dun sa selective breeding, dahil dun sa pag-focus ng mga breeders sa aesthetics rather than dun sa function. As dahil nga purebred nga sila, Limited din yung genetic material na lumalaganap dun sa mga breeds na yan. Humihina tuloy yung genetics nila. Hindi na cover yung mga genetics na may mga problems. Hindi kagaya ng mga crossbreds or mga mixed breeds na mayaman yung genetic material nila. Mas mataas yung heterozygosity. Kaya less prone sila sa iba't ibang mga sakit. Pero anong masasabi nyo guys? Is it right that breeders keep on breeding in terms of aesthetics na, na ma manipulate or masyadong na-exaggerate yung mga mutated features ng mga dog breeds, do you think it's the public that should be blamed for these changes dun sa mga breeds? Anong palagay ninyo? Isulat nyo po sa comments sa baba para magkaroon tayong magandang discussion. Do you think it's inhumane to keep breeding breeds like these? Or do you think na okay lang as long as we keep on finding ways to reduce yung incidents ng mga problema na ito. And what do you think of the suggestion ng ilang mga canine bodies sa buong mundo na mas gusto nila na i-cross yung mga breeds para ma-correct yung mga genetic defect na ito? Please leave your comments in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed, hindi pa kayo nagpapalaw, hindi nyo pa nila like yung Facebook page natin, Manalo K9, and sa YouTube, Manalo K9. Please do so. Ring the bell button para lagi po kayo notified para sa mga bagong videos. This has been Dr. Abel Manalo, Manalo K9. Maraming salamat po sa panonood at mabuhay po kayong lahat.